And now for one of our bigger topics, Justin Haley and Quentin Haley taking to the track this weekend for the World Short Track Championships. Pretty exciting news here. Justin will be racing in the UMP division while Quentin will be racing in the Crate Modifieds. This will be the first time these two have been on the track together in quite a while. There's a lot to prove for these two, and this weekend presents an amazing opportunity for the Dark Horse Race Cars crew to make a huge statement to everyone. Justin Haley, driving the number 99 Dark Horse Racing Modified from Winnemac, Indiana. Yeah, so I, I initially started growing up, you know, racing micro sprints, mini sprints, 600 cc micro sprints up in Indiana, and it was just a, an easy way to go racing. Had three or four local tracks around my hometown of Winnemac, and had a, a really good mentor, Zeke Lewis, who also was uh, racing micro sprints at the time. So it was a good budget-friendly option for me to get some uh, dirt racing, a good stepper between quarter midgets and street stocks. And obviously, I kind of went the pavement path and started late model racing. Got a few ARCA opportunities within the and From there, just you know, evolved into the NASCAR pavement route and then eventually started truck racing. Needed just a little refresher to get back in to the dirt um, swing of things when we were heading to Eldora one year and, and uh, picked up modified racing, bought a car from David Strimmey and uh, started racing. I think we won our first three or four races out in, uh, in the modified. I really enjoyed the horsepower to weight ratio, the little tires we have on these things and, and um, enjoyed it quite a bit. So. Um, you know, just kind of kept it around and the modified career, it's it just kind of stuck around and obviously I've gotten more and more cars since then. First elite chassis sitting behind me. Just kind of like it. It's a, it's a good budget friendly option. Dirt modified racing is. Uh, we might not race for the most money every weekend, but it doesn't take a, a lot to get to the racetrack. So it's been pretty budget friendly and a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, obviously mental aspect of racing is, is a big part of it. Um, obviously you have to have a few key factors. There's um, your physical limits and then your mental you know, limits. So I think a big part of it mentally is where your confidence is in yourself and your abilities and your race team and the car you're driving. You know, I think as a, a young racer growing up, you know, it's, it's easy to get nervous and anxious, but kind of as you do it more often and it's kind of your weekly basis, you know, you start to get get the hang of it and um, mentally you, you can prepare so um, you know there's still some weekends that you always want to improve on especially on the cup side of things 500 600 mile race it's tough to stay mentally focused for the whole race but as you go into a dirt race there's a lot more things that you have to factor in right um, you don't have a whole team around you taking care of everything um, when we go to the dirt track, it's only a few of us, so get out of the car, maybe grind tires, put fuel in it, make adjustments to the race car. It's, uh, it's a lot more to it mentally, so I, I also think that's why I like dirt racing. Is It makes me versatile, not only on the track, but off the track, and allows me to you know work on my equipment, make it better, um, maybe take a shock and spring off the car, and put it on the spring smasher, dyno the shock, and, and figure out 
look at some graphs, figure out, you know, if, if it's going to work for us and, and try to dissect the, the setup and, and really put it into the race car. So I think that's really why I like dirt racing is I got a little more hand in, in what we're doing on the ownership side and also the driving side. I'm Quinn Ailey, driver of the number 13 Dark Horse Modified Lethal Chassis, originally from Winnemac, Indiana. Growing up, my family was heavily involved in racing. Uh, Justin and I, when we were really young, we used to ride our bikes around our driveway we would draw out a real, uh, little track and chalk and we would alternate between who would be the driver and who would be on the pit crew and we'd come in and practice these pit stops where one of us would pretend to change the tire on this bike and then I kind of got out of racing I went off to military academy um, I started playing rugby in high school and college and really racing kind of took a side to my life but it was heavily involved with my family and Justin's life obviously and then I came back to Charlotte, I went to UNCC, I kind of got into running flat carts over at Millbridge in the DNQ series. Um, I kind of just asked on a whim to my stepfather, Nate, hey, can I get in one of Justin's Modified? He kind of laughed at me, he kind of thought it was funny. I, I didn't really expect to ever get a chance to drive one, just it's so hard when you're my age at 23, I think is when I started really getting into big cars, it's so hard to learn everything. And, yeah, I hopped in one. I managed to get it. I managed to convince everyone to do a test. Cherokee got in, and the first lap I think I got on the chip, and I think Justin looked at Nate and just said, "Oh crap!" Like he's not scared, and that's kind of where it took off. And I've been running modifieds now for two years, and you know I had a lot of ups, had a lot of downs, and it's uh, it's been a it's been a journey. When I was a young kid, I, I really looked up to uh, Jason Leffler and David Stremme. They both raced for my uncle and just having that personal connection with both of them was really cool and I just thought it was so neat how they would come to my small town of Winnemac, Indiana where we had two stoplights and here are these NASCAR drivers. When I got back into racing, I had to pick a number. I thought about choosing the number 11. It was Justin's number at the time and I thought it'd be kind of cool if I ran the 11 and you know, he ran the 11 in Xfinity. But I started thinking about it and the number 13 came to mind. Jason Leffler, he ran that in a sprint car and unfortunately we lost him a couple years ago. Um, so this number 13 really sat on my mind and the more I thought about it, you know, just as my own way of honoring him and because he was so influential in my early years when I really was into racing as a child, I said, you know, it's an unlucky number but I think it fits me. Yeah, so the 2022 season up to this point, obviously my, my first full time season. It's been a good season to push for myself and you know, I think you just take a step to, to the cup. It really opens your eyes to every little thing that you can um, extract out of yourself and the race team. You know, it's, it's just the little things, pit road restarts, practice, especially if you get to practice. So, you know, I think the 2022 cup season has, has been good. I haven't been able to run a lot of dirt. Volusia Speed Weeks got pretty much rained out, um, which was pretty sad, but obviously you can't control the weather. And then we went to Illinois for Speed Weeks up there. We were fast, just had a, a lot of issues and ended up on our lid and transitioned um, to this elite chassis. So took a, a little six month break off from dirt racing to uh, you know kind of refocus on the cup stuff. And then obviously as, as the NASCAR season's dying down, there's there are races throughout the off season that I can utilize. So um, just trying to rebuild this program to, to go to Charlotte, kind of see where we stack up 
against the best in the country, you know, go from there. Load in is only a few days away here and the anticipation is building as preparation continues for both the 13 and 99 crew. Justin's really been turning heads at the Dollar 31 this season with third place finishes at Darlington and Texas, a top five at the Charlotte Roval. And don't forget, the 99 car has an all new elite chassis for Justin, which will be a challenge for them this weekend. And Quentin's looking to redeem himself after last season. Absolutely. Lots of storylines for these two heading into the racing weekend. Coming off of last season, I, my own expectations were a little higher. I wanted to finish up front a lot more. You know, last season was really just about learning where the limits of the car were, learning how to drive, just things a lot of people take for granted who have been racing for a long time. I really had to learn how to drive a race car at the age of 24, 25, and that's been extremely difficult just because so many of the people I'm racing around race every weekend. They've been racing their whole life. They've been around racing, whereas I had to kind of jump into this not knowing much. So this year we've done pretty good though. We went to Illinois, ran, I was running fifth or sixth, I think, at a really stout field of uh, 30 or 40 cars. Uh, unfortunately broke a drive shaft um, with about five laps to go. Would have been a good finish. Then we went off to East Lincoln. I uh, ran second in the heat, finished second in the race. That was a huge boost for my confidence. I think I even, I almost cried when Matt came over to tell me congratulations because just so much work had went into it. and. Even finishing second just felt like a victory at the time. Then went to Cherokee. That place was pretty wide open. I may or may not have jumped the starts a couple times and lost a couple rows here and there. Finished fifth, I believe, which is another good run. And then we went to Friendship. Uh, I qualified what I thought was going to be on pole until the last three cars. I guess the track must have got faster and they were really, really good cars. But qualified fourth, um, started fourth in the feature, and unfortunately just kind of ran out of talent. Uh, about eight laps in, I kind of got my own head a little bit. But it's been a good season so far. I really feel like things are starting to make sense to me in terms of how to drive the car. And, you know, my ability to talk to Matt and just let him know the what I'm feeling in the car to help him make adjustment changes has been just exponentially better than last year. So getting ready for the short track nationals at Charlotte, it's a lot of just disassembling the car, full checking everything. You know, obviously the stuff like doing a oil change for the motor and just going through all our shocks and springs to make sure everything's right. Um, the hardest part has actually just been acquiring the tires. I mean, there's a tire shortage right now in racing altogether. And so making sure we have enough tires for that, I mean, we're probably gonna go through two or three sets um, over the couple days that we're there. And then just, mentally getting ready, you know. I'm kind of going out there, making sure I feel comfortable in the car, just trying to find things on the setup, and just making sure that when I'm getting ready to go to Charlotte, I feel good about it. I feel good about the car, I feel good about myself, I'm mentally like prepared and ready. Not really sure what to expect here. Got uh, got no chance to test it. No chance to shake it down. Just gonna go out there and fill it out, I guess. About seventy-five percent, maybe eighty. Start getting a little confidence built up. Yeah, should work. I think she's right. Welcome to the dirt track at Charlotte here for three days of racing action. The Dirt Car World Short Track Championships. One of the biggest events of the year. All the preparation, all the team building, it all leads up to this. The final event of the year for a lot of these teams. We have a heavy slate of racing action here today. Plenty of time to see cars out on track. We'll see UMP modifieds, freight modifieds, 602 late models, 
Hornets, and Street Stocks. A loaded field here with lots of divisions. Hot Laps will roll off at 5 p.m. sharp, which will set the field for Friday's heat races. Then it's the UMP Modified Division qualifying for a Championship Invitational. The top 10 will lock themselves in. Afterward, we'll have a Championship Invitational race and a 20-lap feature for our competitors. Anyway, you know, just put on the old, the old fire suit here. Got a mess behind me. Take out the Elite for the first time. I've actually never drove this Charlotte dirt track, so excited to get out there. New car, new track, new Justin. It's plenty new this week, so got the old FOE fire suit on here. Got Quinn. He's at class right now doing whatever they do at class. I'm just going to roll with it, you know? I'm not gonna send it. We're gonna ease into it here. Going to uh, first time the car's been on track, so Just gotta take it slow and steady. Hope, hope for the best, I guess. Last time I was in a modified six months ago, I flipped it. Here we are. Yeah, you know, it's just important to, to go dirt racing. I think it uh, gives back to the local community, and, and I also think that there's a lot of, you know, dirt-specific fans. I think the Martinsville Charlotte weekend is cool. You know, it's only two, two and a half hours away from each other, and, um, you know, you race all, all night Friday, Saturday, and then um, those same fans go to the racetrack Sunday. So, you know, I don't quite dirt race as much as some of the other cup guys. But when I do dirt race, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy it. For the for the most part, you know, some nights are better than others. But you know, I think it's just uh, one of those things where if I can go have some fun and and um, really enjoy myself and and be in a no, no pressure environment, dirt racing, then you know, it's good for my overall health. I think uh, obviously when you're at the highest form of stock car racing in the country, uh, racing the NASCAR Cup Series, it's uh, you know, it's pressure, and uh, you know, pressure is a privilege, but uh, you know, at some point you have to, you know, go on vacation, relax, and it just happens that dirt racing is my vacation. All right, up next is the qualifying for the UMP and Crate Mod divisions. It's finally time to see who can lay down a quick one here. With the sun going down, this track will slick off real quick. <laughs> Hot laps is the first time you'll touch the track all evening long. You get about three to five laps. You really get a feel for the car, let the motor get some heat in it, and really work the track in to see what it'll be like for qualifying. It really starts to set the tone for the night as far as handling of the car wise.
time for today's hot lap sessions. Up first, we have the UMP Modifieds, and here's Justin Haley in the 99. David Strimi leads the UMP group with a 16.95. A ripping time for Haley. The 99 goes 10th quick on the boards with a 17.175. Here come the great modifieds for their hot lap qualifying session. It's sixth quick for Quint Haley in the 13. 18570 is the time, and that Dark Horse Racing lethal chassis looks bad fast. Just got done with uh, qualifying here. Went out there, put two laps together, qualified six. Car felt really good, a little tight on center. The track's really gonna slick off for tomorrow, so I'm not really sure exactly what kind of changes we need to make, but I feel pretty confident, felt pretty sporty. Just need to gather myself up and make sure I don't make any mistakes tomorrow. We should have a pretty good shot at it. I felt like I had a good drive. Like once it once it finally got set, it would drive fine. There was a second lap, one and two in the middle. I thought I got loose. Like, I was pretty over-rotated. Did you see that at all? I think I was trying to, I, like you said, that first lap I was tight, so I tried to overcompensate by giving it more throttle. I don't know, man. It's hard to tell you like what I felt in two laps. But it had a good turn in. Like, I just, on the throttle, turned, grabbed a whole bunch of wheel in.
I think it's wild when I go dirt racing. Um, you know, it's hot lap qualifying is what we call it. So there's no practice and qualifying is your practice. So you basically roll through tech, you get three laps, you go out there and, and give it your all. That's where they seed you for the heat race. So I think it's awesome, especially with this, this compacted cup schedule that we have where practicing qualifying is only 20 minutes long. Um, dirt racing and, and my background in dirt racing kind of gives me the opportunity to um, adapt quicker. So you know, you just roll out, run those laps, and then throughout the feature, you know, the feature might only be 20, 30 laps, but it's just as physical as a 500 mile race at, at uh, you know, Texas or Atlanta. So, you know, every time I go dirt racing, I feel like after hot laps, I get out of the car and I'm worn out just because the adrenaline's so high and you have to adapt so quickly to your surroundings and what the track's doing. Obviously, every time you roll out on the racing surface, it's different and you have to develop and change the car throughout the night. And it's, it's really just a guessing game, especially for someone like me who doesn't do it too often it's hard to read the track conditions. So I think that's what keeps me a big part of being here. Is, like I said earlier, it keeps me um, fresh and, and really allows me to um, adapt myself, my driving style um, and change that and, and not get repetitive with what I'm doing on the racetrack. Just got, uh, just got done with hot laps. Pretty good feel for the uh, Go 99. Here's this go right here. Howdy. I'm here for chips. I'm here for chips. Um, pretty good. Going to go out here and qualify here in a second. See what we got. But um, first time out in the car, everything stayed together, and um, pretty impressed with it. So we'll uh, see what qualifying brings. Maybe run a feature tonight if we make it. And uh, yeah, feel pretty good about it. So on to the next uh, next session, and uh, keep working to be better. So, while we have a few minutes, what did you guys see from the hot laps as we're about to roll into the championship invitational qualifying here in just a few moments? Well, I'll tell you what. Those Dark Horse Racing Modifieds look bad fast. Quentin in the 13 Crate Mods had a really nice time, and Justin, my goodness, that Elite UMP looked hooked up. I agree. Both of the Haley brothers are looking very strong here today. Qualifying time for the UMP Modifieds, here we go. Across the line, Justin Haley, look at that elite chassis fly. Second quick in Group B for Justin Alia, 16.748. Qualified second overall, pretty good. About to climb in for the race. Uh, the race is like a, you like kill draw. So they took the top 10 and uh, off speed we qualified second. And uh, then they just choose 10 people who they like, I think is how it's done. Then all 20 of us uh, redraw. So I drew an 80, which is not good. Eight, it's a zero through 100. So I'll be starting towards the tail, just gonna kind of work up. Obviously, I have the second best car, so only got uh, four laps on this thing, and it's uh, been pretty fast. So kind of get through tonight, and uh, real show starts tomorrow. All right, it's time to redraw for the championship invitational. With this event, a pill draw is done to reset the order for the 20 car field. As these guys are all just out there to have some fun. It's going to be really unfortunate for some drivers who qualified fast, but just have an unlucky draw. Justin Haley, David Stremme, and Ryan Ayers are all guys who have looked fast, but if they draw poorly, they can be in the back. The Championship Invitational coming up soon. It was really cool when I fired off our heats there. I uh, rolled in behind Ryan Ayers, who's a close friend of Justin and I. And it's one of those things where Ryan's one of those guys who I know I can always learn from, and I know he's not going to make many mistakes as a driver. So just being able to follow him, you know, he's got a lot of experience dirt racing. He's been doing it pretty much his whole life, and just being on track with him taught me so. Like I learned so much tonight just in hot laps, just being behind him for those two or three laps we did. Charlotte's a lot of fun. It's really unlike any other track out there. It just carries so much speed and you're going so fast and 
it's kind of weird it's one of the bigger tracks that i race at but it feels so small with how fast we're really going you really don't have time to think about stuff um the problem with racing at charlotte actually is really all the driver like i said before you know you just got to minimize those driver mistakes because you feel like you can carry so much more speed through the corner and just hold it wide open but it's just being aware cognizant of hey i probably need to you know breathe the throttle a little bit let it take that set let it eat then drive off the corner it's it's really just a drive like uh, a mental mindset track really you just can't beat yourself because at the end of the day here at charlotte you know you got what you got and the littlest bit will cost you a lot in the long run just because of how fast we're going it's hard to really get away from people and we're all carrying so much speed that the one little mistake and you'll just get passed by three or four cars so it's a fun track i like racing here um they do charlotte does a really charlotte motor speedway does a really good job of just uh making sure that it's well ran you know we go through things pretty quickly for how many cars we got here i think we have 53 cars in our class and it took maybe five or ten minutes just to get through all of our hot lap sessions so it's a really nice facility i really like racing here i'm really excited about tomorrow it's time for tonight's championship invitational 20 laps 22 driver is going to be a fun one here to cap off our thursday night A full field redraw places Kenny Shaw and Ethan Dotson on the front row. Justin Haley was second quick overall. He'll be starting 17th. Here we go, green flag in the air, off and underway here at Charlotte as they stack up in front of them. Wow, the leader just didn't go and we have lots of cars bent up already and we haven't even crossed the stripe yet for a full lap. Second try, green flag back out racing once again. Haley to the bottom trying to make moves and make things work. Ethan Dotson taking the lead from Kenny Shaw. The double zero is pulling away already. Oh, and it looks like Haley has a problem. Bent rim, it looks like. And the 99 pulls off. Haley calling it a night. He was going slow, and it seems a right rear tire is down for Justin Haley. Not an ideal end to the night for Justin Haley, but luckily it was only the Invitational. Some right side damage for the 99. A little bit of work to do, but nothing too major. Still plenty of time to get that new Elite chassis shaken down for Saturday night. Ethan Dotson, your winner for the 20 lap championship invitational here on Thursday night. All right, definitely not the, uh, not the, not the start we wanted, but car had speed, um, had a little, little contact, got a little bent rim here on the start, and then that bent rim turned into a flat tire. Just, uh, apart there so you see the damage but 
uh, flat tires all uh, all we got broken after the first night pretty good so feel confident about uh, where the car's at Nick helped a lot this this uh, event I guess today and uh, got to set up so I feel like we're gonna be fast tomorrow I uh, think we re-qualify tomorrow and do heat races so put a new right rear on it and uh, that's about all the damage you got to straighten out a panel or two and um, we'll roll out so yeah good good first night for us at, at Dark Horse Quinn did a good job uh, in hot laps he's been out of the car for a little bit qualified sixth overall um, so we both got speed it's just um, how much luck do we got so just keep grinding away out of here and uh, see how tomorrow goes that's all she wrote for today folks we're gonna be packing up for the night and some of these teams have quite a bit to mull over before tomorrow's event Tomorrow is the day that matters, heat racing day. It'll be a long and full day of seeing who makes it into the show and who will have to go to the B-Main. We had a really good uh, heat session, qualified six out of 53 cars. I mean, my team did a really good job getting uh, the car ready. It was really fast. Platform felt really good. I had, really had no issues. Might have been a little tight center exit off the corner, but I, you know, in the past, like last year, the track really slicked off pretty quick with how many cars they have here. So I'm kind of hoping that having a tighter race car will help me. You know, looking forward to the uh, heat races tomorrow. I, I just got to keep it under control. I'm starting outside pole. So it's, it, I know the car has a lot of speed after a uh, hot lap qualifying today. It's just going to be about minimizing my own mistakes and making sure I can execute on the restarts and start. So just, you know, trying to take what I learned last year. You know, I had a lot of speed last year, led a couple laps, and fortunately I made a mistake and overdrove the corner. Um, but I'm feeling a lot more confident this year, especially with all the racing we've done and being able to rely on, like, Justin and Brian Ayers and, Rich Dawson and just being able to go to them and ask for advice and really just I feel like my my skill set as a driver compared to last year is just so much more immense I just know how to read a track I know how to make adjustments on my own it's just it's going to be about minimizing those mistakes as a driver myself and just not getting in my own head and starting to overdrive the corner which is going to be big with a slick track but I'm feeling pretty good about it just gotta like I say keep it under control and make sure I don't make any mistakes Welcome to day number two of the Dirt Car World Short Track Championships here at Charlotte. We have a jam-packed day of heat racing action coming at you. Crew members and competitors are at the driver's meeting as we speak, and after it's complete, we're going to have a very busy, very fun day ahead of us. Indeed we will. We'll have the UMP mods up first. Eight laps and the top four will transfer to the A main. Directly afterward, the crate mods will line up for six laps. Only the top three transferring out of that one. If needed, the UMP modified B main will be run tonight, and all other B mains will be run tomorrow. Racing action is coming up very soon. Stay tuned.
day two of Charlotte World Finals. And uh, we got a new set of tires on it and uh, fixed the right side damage. Had a little small brake issue, a little brake um, fluid leak there in the driver's compartment. It was getting on my feet, so fix that up. So went back to the baseline setup here, how we got it from the lead. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we got a good, good car here. We start pole of the fourth heat race, so uh, top four transfer. Just gotta kind of stay up there towards the front. It's pretty good hot lips, and um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Here for day two at the uh, Charlotte Short Track Nationals. The old 1 3 machine is going to start front row P1 for heat number six. After qualifying yesterday, we did a pretty good job. Pretty excited about it. You know, feeling a little nervous, but uh, you know, just got to go out there and do what I have been doing all year and try to put together a good finish and lock in for tomorrow. It's going to be about reading the track and try to minimize my own mistakes. Yeah, so as the racing progresses at, at a dirt track or even an asphalt track at, at the big amount of halves, you know, you always have to find where your car is mechanically working the best and, and what you feel comfortable as a driver. I think a big part of choosing what line you run and, and where your car is, is really hooking up on the racetrack is, is where you're most comfortable. The more confidence and, and comfort you have in your racing vehicle, the faster you're going to go. So. Um, you know, I think a lot of times at, at a dirt track, you can really read the track and, and kind of see where if you want to be on the bottom or the top. But a lot of times, it's just kind of where your car's working and, and um, what decisions you've made throughout the night to get you there, win the race. So, you know, obviously, it's, uh, it's a lot more fun running the top. And, and as you run the top, you're carrying more momentum, more throttle, and you're getting the cushion. Um, and you're really just trying to find speed and, and um, put together lap time. So, um, when you run the bottom, you know, it's, it's kind of just, uh, you know, putting around there and, and um, just trying to keep it. There's two different, you know, really ways to look at it. A lot of times on a green white checker or something, you want to defend and um, maybe run the bottom. That way no one can, can throw a, a slide job on you. But um, if you're chasing someone and you're in second place and, and, and the top is there and, um, you know, you just want to get a, a big run up off the top and, and try to make some momentum. That option's there too, but it's so track dependent, so car dependent. You know, sometimes we'll go to racetracks where you'll stay in the same lane all night, and then sometimes um, we call it making the track wide, and, and it's just what the track prep crews do to, to make the track wide. So, um, you know, as we lead into Charlotte, it's a, it's a large, um, larger racetrack for, for a modified, and hopefully it gets wide like it has in the uh, past few seasons. Um, and we move around and try to make some speed. Coming up next, the UMP Modified Heat Races. Six races, eight laps, top four transfer. From qualifying, you will roll right into your heat race, and depending on how you qualify, it is going to determine where you start in your heat race. And you finish the top half, maybe third, fourth, that's going to look for a final transfer spot, but what you want to do, finish as high up as you can for a better starting position in the A main. And if you don't transfer in in one of those top few spots, you're going to have to go to a B main. Heat racing time, here we go. It's time to set the field for Saturday night. Heat number four in the UMP Modifieds here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. Justin Haley, Chris Arnold, that'll be your front row here for the eight lap heat. Coming to the green, here we go, green flag. Top four advance, who's going to lock it into the big show? Wow, look at the 99, the Haley 99 that is as he gaps the Arnold 99 and Justin Haley is cruising away on lap number one.
no sweat here for the Dark Horse Racing Machine. Look at that lead Haley has. White flag in the air and it was no contest for Justin Haley. To the line, heat race number four winner, Justin Haley. Great run by the team, they look dangerous. I have so many great people that you know have supported me. You know, David Stremi, builder of Lethal Chassis. He has been monumental in just trying to help me learn to grow. You know, he recognizes that this is really new to me, and I'm just learning how to drive a race car for the first time. Uh, Matthew Logan, he builds my shocks. He's been super helpful. You know, I can bring him a set of shocks and be like, "All right, what were you missing?" And you know, he'll build me a completely new set. So just all the people really that. For no real reason outside of maybe they, you know, they like me, I guess. I hate saying that, but there's so many people out there who've just given up their time, given up money just to help me race, and I just can't think of enough. You know, my mom, Nate, you know, they don't have to let me do this, and the fact that they do just means the world to me, and I'm just so thankful because at the end of the day, racing is the most fun thing I've ever done, and if I could race every day for the rest of my life, I think it'd be, that would be, you know, perfect for me. I'd be so happy, but. Just having these opportunities to go out and race is just, uh, I couldn't ask for anything more. Great modified heat races coming up next. Here we go. The top three will transfer after the six lap heats. Great modified heat time. Heat number six is on deck. The drivers sitting and staging. We have a good one here. Quentin Haley, Ty Norder, those two make up the front row. Six laps, top three transfer to the A main after this one. Waiting, waiting, green flag. Ty Norder gets a jump on the start. We stay green. Quinn Haley is falling backwards as Norder takes the lead. Questionable move by the two, but he commands the field after lap one of six. Yellow is out of spin here on lap 3, going to stack the field up one more time for a restart.
waiting for the signal and green flag three to go here in heat number six. Quentin Haley, Austin Way himself battling for that fourth spot. Haley and Cell fighting for that fourth spot, but they'll get to battle in the B main as Ty Norder wins heat number six. Cambridge Gann and Greg Brown take the other two transfer spots. Everyone else will be racing in the B main tomorrow. A questionable move put Ty Norder out front. The 13 is going to be fighting in the B main tomorrow. Well, that's all she wrote for today, guys. Tell me, were there any key things you noticed from today's heat races? Well, for one, Justin Haley looked on rails during his heat race. Just just blew the competition out of the water. That 99 is dialed in. As for Quentin Haley, he just didn't have it. Got jumped on the start, and they didn't call it back. Just a bad deal overall for the 13 car. I agree. It's time for him to regroup, refocus, and go get him in the B main tomorrow. That's exactly right. Tomorrow is all that matters. Big, big money on the line for these guys. We'll see you tomorrow for day three, the final day of the Dirt Car World Short Track Championships. You went past the first tire. You didn't go, and then I was like, you better fire because you're just going to jump it. Or then you, you, you hesitated, and then he went, and then you went. Like, pull that back. Like, make them call it. Because he fired, and then you were like, oh, so then you fired, and then in their eyes, they're like, just, you know what I'm saying, run. Break check, don't break check, but hold on. Face and just don't fuck with that. Yeah, I saw him go. Yeah, like, the game you painted because he jumped in. And it's just me. And in your mind, you're like, oh, like, 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 make him throw a yellow and call it back. Let's go look Right? I saw him go. I like, oh, no, I know, but, but again, I've, 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 dude, I've raced for 20 years now. This is your second year. You're not expecting and I'm not being smart. It's no, like, like, this is my 13th it, race. It's a whole learning curve, right? It's a whole learning curve. Like, once you learn a stupid tricks like that, you find yourself using them a lot more than you think you do. You know what I mean? And Jay is stupid fast and he can slow down. God damn, that was ignorant. Good morning from Concord, North Carolina. We're back at the Charlotte Dirt Track for day three, the final day for the Dirt Car World Short Track Championships. The whole week, the whole season has been leading up to this point, to these races, to these key feature events. The anticipation, the excitement, it's all in the air here today. Drivers are nervous, crews are ready, and the cars are getting warmed up. It's going to be a full day of racing. On tap today, it's a busy day. We've got the Crate Modified B Main up first, only eight laps to lock into the A Main. Then we go feature racing, can the Crate Mods, 25 laps to see who can get the big check. Then the UMP feature, 30 laps to crown a champion for that division. It's going to be a fun day. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. We're here at Charlotte for day three of the World Short Track National Championship. Feeling pretty good about it. Uh, you know, kind of just regrouped after last night. Just bring a completely different mindset. I don't feel as nervous as I did yesterday and just got to uh, really put together eight stellar laps here, have a good restart. We're starting pretty close to the front, so 
hopefully be, uh, put a good race together and find our way into the championship race tonight. Here we go, B main time. Those crate modifieds are ready to rumble here today in Charlotte. One last chance for any of these guys to walk into the show. Heat race, led every lap. Car was working really good. Just kind of what we expected, so it was nice to kind of back that up. I was driving pretty hard, so long feature tonight. Um, 30 laps, kind of see where the track goes here. Quentin's about to go do the LCQ, and um, yeah, just see where the track goes. See what we need to do the car. It's been really fast all weekend. We haven't really touched it. Kind of got the elite base set up on it. So um, just got back from Martinsville. Price and qualifying the Cup car. Redrew third, I believe. So, I'm yeah, just gonna go out here, and field out. Hopefully, have a good run. Um, if not, I feel pretty confident about our program and uh, everyone at Dark Horse Race Cars has done a great job over the past few weeks getting this thing put together. And um, I feel like we got a good modified program moving forward. So, if uh, even if this weekend doesn't go good, I still feel confident that when we go to Volusia here in a few weeks, we'll, we'll be pretty good. So, just keep on uh, keep on the track here and see where we go. It's Saturday, the final day here for the World Short Track Championships, and for these drivers it's B main time, the final time for these crate modified drivers to try and make it into tonight's main show. You want a shot at the big check? This is what it comes down to. The B main, you got about 12 laps to get to the front. If not, you're going home. Top few finishers advance to the A main. Go big or go home and try and get the big cash. We have a strong field in this B main. It will be 12 laps and the top two will advance. Only two, so you better buckle up for some hard racing. Ethan Wilson, Austin Wayne Self make up row one. Brian Morgan and Quinn Haley will be sitting in row two. Here we go, green flag. We are underway here on Saturday at Charlotte. Into turn one, Quentin Haley in third goes under Austin Wayne's self. He's going to try the slider. Making it stick, Quentin Haley to second place, now going to track down the leader. Ethan Wilson under attack from Quentin Haley. Haley gunning for the B main win. Look at that 13, it is looking bad fast. They have the setup dialed in today. White flag, the 5W, the 13, first and second. Around three and four, Ethan Wilson and Quentin Haley will advance to the A main. What a drive for Quentin Haley.
just got done with the B main, finished second, had a really fast car. You know, I had enough speed to really go for the win, but I just kind of backed it down, didn't run a uh, risk making contact or spinning out for some, just one more additional spot in the feature tonight. Had a really fast race car and managed to not make uh, any mistakes and put it in the show. So we'll see what it's got tonight. strategy between dirt racing and NASCAR is vastly different. In dirt racing, you usually have about 30 laps to get the job done, so you're going as hard as you can in those 30 laps. When it comes to strategy during the race, you can run high, low, or if the middle is rolling, you just roll right through the middle. Setup also plays a big factor in dirt, whether it's shocks or bars, or even the compound of the tire if it's soft or hard. In NASCAR, it's a little bit more of an endurance race. Sometimes you're going 250 or 500 miles, and setup is a big factor there as well, but it's a long time to manage your all equipment. That's how the difference is between NASCAR and dirt racing. Everything you've worked hard for, this is the moment it comes down to. The A main event, the big money on the line. Who's going to get to the front and get it done? Concord, North Carolina, or wherever you're watching, get ready, get on your feet. It's feature racing time from the Charlotte Dirt Track. The great modified feature is about to get underway. We've got 25 laps for 26 drivers who will take home the money. It's going to be a great race. Eric Bentley and Ty Norder make up row one. Brian Nickerson, Ryan Ayers in row two. Quinton Haley starting 24th in this feature, going to be a lot of work to get to the front. Here we go, Grinch flag is in the air! Ryan Ayers moves into second, Kevin Congrazio right behind him. We have a great battle for the lead. Quinn Haley slowly but surely moving through the field. He's gone from 24th to 22nd already. Another one down for Quentin Haley. He is moving. Ten laps. 
laps down and Quinn Haley has moved to the 19th position here going for that hard charger. Yellow flag is out, Ryan Ayers gets into Kevin Pongrazio and that will freeze the field on lap 16 of 25. We're going to restart here with nine laps to go. Green flag in the air. Around Buck Stevens, the 13 is working his way through the field with six to go. Quentin Haley is absolutely moving here, working his way around the outside. Two to go here at Charlotte. What a race we have here, coming to the final lap. At the stripe, Ty Norder takes the checkered, but it's Quinn Haley who moved up 11 spots to go from 24th to 13th. What a run from the 13 car. UMP Modifieds are on track next. Who's ready? It's feature time! The UMP Modifieds are up 30 laps to see who takes home the big check tonight. for the best and we've got them 26 of the best UMP modified drivers ready to go 30 laps Taylor Cook and Kyle Strickler make up that first row Justin Haley Mike McKinney will make up row number two green flag we're off and underway Taylor Cook leads them off in the turn number one Justin Haley moves into second place, motoring around Strickler. Cook, Haley, Dotson, your top three.
Dotson coming up on Haley. Battle for second. He's up. Dotson moves up to second. Haley back to third. That 99 car looking very strong in third. Only a few laps left here in the Yuki Modified Feature. Final lap here at Charlotte. Coming to the line, Taylor Cook wins. Ethan Dotson second, Justin Haley finishes third. And how about Dark Horse Racing this weekend? What an incredible effort from those guys. It really was. Just just an incredible effort for everyone involved there in that operation. Justin had a great race, especially after qualifying down at Martinsville, driving back up and hopping into his dirt car. Just a great effort from him overall. How about Quentin Haley? What a drive from the 13. He went from 24th to 13th. That's crazy. What a great run for him and his entire crew. Fans, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you for sticking around for this entire action-packed weekend from the Charlotte Dirt Track. That's a wrap for us. Thank you for joining. We just finished up here at uh, the World Finals at Charlotte. Had a good run for both of us. I finished third, started third, finished third. Um, pretty proud of what we did this weekend with a new car. And um, yeah, solid weekend overall. Quinn qualified sixth. Had, uh, not the heat race he was looking for, but made up for it in the B main. And then went from uh, last, I think, 26th yeah. to uh, 13th there at the end. So pretty happy with his drive. Obviously, he uh, has improved a lot over the weekend, learning his race craft. He's always had speed, but um, you know, just lack of experience in race craft. So he did a good job tonight, this whole weekend. And uh, pretty good pretty good week. Both of them are rolling in um, straight into the trailer. We can build on it and uh, build a Volusia here in the next few weeks. And, be a little bit better. So, how you feel about it, Kip? Oh, really good. That was that was a lot of fun. So, thank you for uh, yeah, letting me race, and thank you for everyone that came out and helped us this week. Yeah, for sure. So, we, uh, I guess that's the end of the old docu series, huh? It's it was like that. So, from start to finish, you saw it here first. Um, really proud, like I said, of everyone here at uh, Dark Horse Race Cars, which is pretty much just me, Quinn, and Matt. So, the whole time, but um, just trying to build something. And um, yeah, we'll uh, go to Volusia and see what we got.